guys, welcome back. This week, something uh, very different. I've got a gun that is the same age as me. This gun was built in 1974, which means it'll be 50 next year, just like I will. Um, this is a B25A1 skeet gun. It's a B25. It is a Belgian-made Browning superposed, like what you can still buy, but... Nowadays, ordering one of these is going to cost you around about £70,000. Admittedly, with a higher level of figure on it than this one. But this is a hand-built B25 that you can buy for 525 money, which is interesting. Johnny just had a look at a B and A1 that is, it was in the Holtz auction. And I thought it would be interesting to have a look at one that was a bit less molested. This one is basically mint original. Very, very, very well looked after. It needs a little bit of work just to tidy up the um, the mouths of the chambers, but to be honest, it's just dirty. It isn't. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. It still <laughs> sounds pretty good. It ain't loose. It's nice and tight. Proper captive forend, the works. Quite like this. This is a proper skeet gun. Do the oily bits and then I'll stop waxing lyrical about it. So, 27 and a half inch barrels, 18.4 choked, solid mid rib, two and three quarter chamber. We've got a 13 mil non tapered uh, ventilated top rib with a really wide trim line, white front bead, beaver tail forend. The forend is, as I said, a captive forend like what you don't get no more. Look at that. Um, designed effectively so that you can't lose it, right? You only get two bits when you take the gun apart. Um, the barrel and the forend come off as one piece. The hammers that drive the ejectors are underneath that forend. It's nice. And everything is still nice and tight. The action is effectively it's superposed action. Okay, so ro the, the lockup is the same as a, uh, a 525, but obviously these guns are handmade. This gun was hand fitted. I've been to the factory, I've seen where this was hand fitted and the the technique that this was that was used to build this way back in 1974 is the same technique they're using now. Uh, all of this action was hand cut and hand filed originally at the factory and it's very, very lightly decorated with sort of an acanthus border, a little bit of figure on the bottom of the lumps on the monoblock. Uh, of course, it's not a monoblock, is it? Um, and the trap door. Coming back, the uh, trigger guard has a tiny bit of bordering on it. Trigger blade is non-adjustable, quite far back, but a textured blade. It's not uncomfortable. It, it does mean that the length of pull winds up as being 14 and a quarter, although it's not that short in the stock. It's just because the trigger's so far back, which is quite unusual. Quite slim in the comb, no palm swell to speak of. The wood is, I mean, to be honest, Nowadays, if you got something like this as a base gun, you'd be reasonably you'd be reasonably happy with it, but it's quite plain for its time. Hand checkered, obviously, and very, very nicely done. You can see the hand checkering in it, which is nice to see. Um, as I said, slim in the comb. Uh, it's pretty well standard kind of drop at uh, comb and at heel. Nothing uh, earth shattering there. We've got a baker light, which looks like the original pad on it. Uh, and that's about it for the sort of, oh, and we've got an, a, quite a nice little trigger tang here with the engraved screws, which is just a nice little bit of finish to it. It's a really interesting piece. Like I said, it, it, I'm in this sort of, uh, the edge of kind of guys that shoot one gun for everything, right? And it's really interesting to shoot something that's very clearly designed to do one job. It's the same with trap guns, trap guns are, very, very good at shooting trap. This, as a skeet gun, is really interesting to shoot, shoot skeet with, because it's ever so fast. Um, and of course, uh, fixed choke quarter, uh, skeet and quarter. Um, I'm used to shooting with half of the quarter in all the time, and it does make a little bit of difference. You can afford to be a little bit sloppier. Nice and quick, very, very sort of rapid to move around for sure. Recall wasn't as bad as I was expecting it to be with this little Bakelite pad. You could, of course, fit, um, an inflex pad to it if you wish, and it, which would get you a little bit more length, but to be honest, it's quite comfortable to shoot as it is. It's actually really fun to shoot. I enjoyed shooting it. I, I did a, 
Obviously I've shot skeet with that. I didn't bother shooting anything else. It's designed for skeet. This is what it is. And um, <laughs> it was grand actually. It was fun to shoot as something different. Nimble, yeah, definitely easy to move. I wouldn't like to take it out on a, um, a sporting target that was much past skeet distance though, just because it's so quick. It's very, very quick. It would almost make a half decent little game gun actually, because with the open chokes, I guess you could shoot standard steel through it and it would be okay. Obviously I wouldn't want to try and shoot you know, superior steel through it because it's not proof for it, but with standard steel, this would make a cracking little tool. And it's a B25, hand built, made by artisans in Belgium. <laughs> they don't make them like this anymore, right? Because Miraku started making effectively a copy of this at what was at the time an ATA, essentially, the ATA copy of the 686. And they did it so well that Browning basically couldn't afford to keep up with them and had them start building uh, their mass market guns in Japan. What remains, the B-25 and its brethren, made in Belgium, are hand-built sort of showcases of excellence that you can't buy for this kind of money. I think this is 1,400 quid. I mean, it's a very, very, very well-kept example of uh, this gun. And as such, is at the sort of about where you'd expect it to be price-wise. I don't know, man. I, if I was in the market for something like this... I think I might be tempted. <laughs> it's interesting, certainly, to shoot this after having been to Belgium. The video will, of course, be out soon. Um, and hopefully, you'll be able to see these guns being made. I hope you've noticed that we've launched channel memberships recently. Um, if you join up, buy me a coffee or the equivalent amount of money on a monthly basis, you get early access to videos and a look at even depending on which tier you go for. Um, sometimes some uncut footage or stuff that wouldn't normally make it to the channel. Um, the, of course, other benefit is that you get to support the channel. <laughs> um, this content isn't free to make, especially on the big project stuff that we've started doing recently. Um, it's really useful to get some support if you enjoy the show. Guys, thanks very much for tuning in. I'll see you next time.